So my name is Farida Vanamosi, and I am the artistic manager for the uh, for Outfest Fusion QT BIPOC Film Festival. And I'm so excited to have you join us for the opening night poetry showcase. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I'm going to actually turn it over to Faye. And then the performers are going to turn off their cameras. And then you're going to see them again when they're performing. And they'll do an introduction. You'll get to know them a little better. But I'm going to turn it over to our master of ceremonies. Hey. Oh my gosh. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm so grateful that I was asked to be here today to showcase this lovely event. Um, thank you all for coming, first of all, for taking time out of your day to be here with us. I am Faye Hernandez, author of Hood Criatura, my first full length poetry collection recently published uh, by Sundress Publications in 2020. I'm also just like a basic girl from Inglewood who was once undocumented, who's trans and non-binary, but you know, I'm just here hanging out with all of you. Um, again, like I said, thank you so much for, for being here. I'm so, so happy to be able to introduce these amazing writers, poets, performers, um, and to be here with you all today. So. Uh, do we want to get started? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> um, so firstly, uh, we're going to introduce Bella Boss. Um, our first performer of the night is Bella Boss, and Boss stands for Black Ancestors Here Healing Society, is a Chicago-based raptivist and revolutionary nationally known for making sedition irresistible through the art through her art, activism, and advocacy. Born and raised in Chicago's West, West Side, Boz was thrust into the national spotlight in 2015, when a video of her heartfelt performance at a local march for justice for Laquan McDonald, a teenager killed by Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke went viral. In 2016, Boz co-organized the hashtag Let Us Breathe Collective's Freedom Square occupation, a 45-day occupation of Chicago's secret police precinct, Homan Square, notorious for kidnapping, torturing, and forcing confessions from Black men. Freedom Square became a de facto civic leadership art camp for the North Lawndale community where Boz co-directed daily programming for youth. The summertime occupation was covered by national media outlets, urging the country to critically examine the world we exist in and to radically reimagine the world we want to create. Acknowledged for the visionary leadership and energy she brings to the fight for a more just and humane nation, Boz joined the Open Society Foundation as a 2017 Soros Justice Fellow. She organized a cohort of arts activists, the Sister Survivor Network, also known as SSN, to produce accessible events and opportunities to uplift women and girls who survive carceral trauma, carceral trauma while mobilizing support to drastically reduce America's prison population. Boz is a founding member of the Decarceration Collective TDC and since 2016 has worked closely with lead criminal defense attorney My, An My Angel Cody developing successful freedom campaigns for federal prisoners sentenced to die behind bars for nonviolent drug offenses. TDC recently garnered national attention when Kim Kardashian donated a support to support the nonprofit's efforts to disrupt injustice through litigation. Boz is also a founding member and co-chair of the statewide Women's Justice Redefining the Narrative Task Force, a historic convening of more than 250 women leaders from across Illinois united to strategically reduce harm to women and their children before, during, and after incarceration, while working to drastically cut the women's prison population by 50% or more over the next seven years. Bella, you a beast. This is dope. Thank you for being here and um, I can't wait to hear you. I appreciate that. All right, so I'm from Chicago. I am one of the subjects of the documentary Unapologetic. I hope y'all check that out. It's in a film festival um, and it's about Chicago. <laughs> um, so if y'all are not under a rock, you probably know that Chicago just released a police murder video of 13 year old Adam Toledo. Uh, he was murdered in the neighborhood that I am in right now. Um, so this evening is supposed to be about joy. 
but we'll get to that. I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta represent from Chicago right now. So bear with me. It don't feel very joyful here right now. Fuck your government and your politics, your laws uphold white supremacists. Yeah, we had a black president. He wasn't on no black liberation shit. If he was, he couldn't have been in that position then. So far removed from our experience, he ain't posed a threat to white imperialists. In my opinion, it ain't meritorious to be commander in chief when they at war with us. Oval office from the back of the bus. It don't matter where we sit if we still powerless. I think power is making your environment a product of you. See, white kids learn how to own, but I would taught us how to consume. They fucked up when they let me enter the school. I mastered all of their books. Then I put them all in my hooks. My tuition paid for the hood. Lyrics of service and the good. I'm trying to give back what they took, like the right to an education in the nation. What we facing, everyday degradation. More black men on parole or probation than we ever had on a fucking plantation. But your explanation say that shit not racist. Fourth of July, fuck out we celebrating. Our niggas in slavery. We screaming we made it. This is their destination? Hell no, we keep pacing. I'm a young sister soldier, La Angela Davis, trying to lead a movement. Just vote for a lady. Look, I got the shorties yelling boss for president. If I ever run, I be the realest since Harriet. Tell the electoral college, I'm gonna need me a scholarship. Gang shit is politics. The difference is rhetoric. Real leaders in the ground. It's criminals in the government. I just want my reparations. You could call it a settlement. Genocide ain't no accident though. So we could show up to their polls or we cut up all of our polls. Go toe to toe in the ring like a nigga proposed. Because I went to their college, got magna cum laude, learned shit that they told me, it don't really matter. It won't help my brothers who locked in their cellars. So I yell free my niggas and name at their sheriffs. Deputy dead at his desk, three bullets off in his chest, proof that you do need a vest. They think it's a game, boy, this shit ain't no joke. Ain't breaking no laws, they shit already broke. Fuck do they think they are playing with Bella Bars. All of my niggas are militant. All of my niggas doing petty ass sentences. This ain't a rap, it's a document to the United States government. We do not fuck with your governance. All of my sisters and brethren, we made a covenant. We will not spend one more dime. See, you respect black lives. Put that quote on the picket sign, get the gang and let's go. Take this shit straight to your dough. Heard you been looking for woe. Is this what you've been looking for? So just in the hood, so they always on toe. My brown got shot down walking home from the store. His killer didn't even have to go to court. Raised a million dollars to show they support. Fuck it, we not trying to build good rapport. Now that shit is dead. You better stay inside if you are scared. City so cold that you got to wear layers. But rocking the hoodie mean that they will pray us. Walk out the door, my grandma say her prayers. I sulamu lake them. Don't fuck with the pigs. I don't fuck with the bacon. Think that I'll go, then you probably mistaken. This is black history that we are making. We are black history. It's in the making and even if we don't our story's gonna make it <sighs> our story's gonna make it my story made it to this film festival <laughs> uh again that's unapologetic i hope y'all check that out it's a lot more of that in the film it's a lot more how we use art and activism in chicago to really uplift the real the true narrative of what's going on here because you're not getting that in the media that's they're not they're not telling the truth right they said adam toledo had a gun he paid it was an armed confrontation with the police that that's not what happened right um so thank y'all for creating this space where we could come in and we could we could share our side of the story it's important for me to be able to have a platform to talk to people right now about what's going on um but okay let's get to some joy <laughs> The name of this piece is OG. Let's celebrate black women. That's what I'm here to do. That's what Unapologetic does. Y'all gonna have to go check that out for real. If I don't convince you to do nothing else, you're gonna go watch Unapologetic. All right, OG. My granny was an entrepreneur. When she moved to the shy, she was dirt poor. She had kids to provide for. She would die for a black woman in America. That's a meal woman made something out of nothing though. Yeah, she made millions off flipping work. No, the feds watching real niggas flip the bird, speaking cold. If they catch you, keep the cold, keep your soul. My granny damn fold, did time never told. Look, my mama, she a OG. She bought a Benz when she was 14. By 23, my OG had a different car for every day of the week, and she still got a 95 AMG. Baby girl's born in 93, finally. Now here is me. Granny raised a bunch of queens. I done seen a bunch of things on the air to a bunch of drinks. All their dreams live inside of me. I know that they all count on me to bring them to reality. I know they all already proud of me. I got to keep making them proud of me. I do it for the family. That love is what inspires me. Mookie said I could be anything I want to be, and I should never want to be anything that wasn't me. 
I just wanted to be free, half a family tree, been trapped by the streets or the penitentiary. I just want to set them free, run away from poverty. Look, I'm feeling like Harriet, burden of a black woman, think you could carry it. Why should I tell my story if I know they're going to bury it? Why should I have this baby if I know I'm going to bury it? There's some heavy shit and my mama here weight on top of it, moving it. Did it all for the fam, did it all for kids, but my mama, she an OG. Grandmama, she an OG. I got a bunch of aunties. And they all low jigs, a long line of black queens. They all helped raise me. So what you think they taught me? Tell me what you think they make me? Look, growing up, I never thought that I was poor. I was spoiled. I got everything I wanted, plus more. Every week, I got another pair of joints, every game system, every game form. I thought we could afford it. All our cars were imported. Drugs across the border. Feds helped across the border. But the rest kids and deport them. I wish hell was post-mortem like Granny saw her granddaughter. But devils walking upon us. They hate the shine, hope it tarnish. Glowed up, I got it honest. My parents, they kept the promise. Sent the baby girl to college. Gave me the life that they wanted. I appreciate it. That's a $100,000 piece of paper. My granny framed it to her. I'm already famous. Look, fame has never been a goal, but I'm a natural born leader. So I already know that it's coming. So I'm ready. Like I'm all packed to go. Niggas hunting, they ain't at me, but I might be next to go. I'm supposed to be the next to blow. From the west side of Chicago, you never really know. Bottom of the toe and pole, that's why niggas toe and pose. I ain't really ready to go. I ain't stepping out the door. Okay, I'll pop out. <laughs> I'm nailed or the niggas better watch out. I might pull a Cartier, watch out. Time is money, I ain't sitting in the damn house. My granny worries, steady calling about my whereabouts. I'm probably with the shooters when they aired out. Lord, forgive me, you know, I'm just trying to make it out. I'm sending all these prayers up. I hope a blessing come down. Lately, I've been feeling if I stick around, I'll be another Nipsey Hussle, be a Mike Brown. Even with our hands up, we still getting gunned down. That ain't how I'm going out. That's his story. That ain't my story. I'm about to white it out. Fuck them, black it out. Because my mama, she a OG. Grandmama, she a OG. I got a bunch of antiques. And they all OGs. A long line of black queens. They all helped raise me. So what you think they taught me? Tell me what you think that make me. Hey, I think that's all I'm gonna do. I appreciate y'all. Um, if y'all wanna keep up with me, you can follow me on social media at Bella Boz. Boz is B-A-H-H-S. It's an acronym for Black Ancestors, Ancestors Here Healing Society. Black Ancestors Here Healing Society, not bars, not prisons, saying that that's not how we heal society. I'm an abolitionist. I'm a revolutionary. I think I'm going to cut my bio down to just say Bella Boz is a revolutionary and that's it. <laughs> um, I'm the author of the revolutionary column via the tribe, the tribe Chicago. It's a black media news outlet. Um, alternative news, so you can get our perspectives. I just wrote an article about uh, the Adam Toledo killing and why we didn't need to see that video to know that the Chicago police were lying, because um, that's what they do, and we know that. So y'all could go check that out. It's on the tribe.com. The tribe is spelled with two I's, T-R-I-I-B-E. Y'all should check that out. It was founded by the same Black woman who produced the documentary, Un Unapologetic, uh, Morgan Johnson. So we're going to keep plugging Chicago and what we're doing and how we're uh, trying to set in an abolitionist example, a revolutionary example for a way forward. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. Go to bellaboz.com and subscribe to my website. Um, I'm about to drop some music next week, and y'all probably don't want to miss that. So thank you, Bella. Um, thank you for grounding us in, in the reality of our, of our experiences, the experiences of our Black and Brown folks. Um, uh, I think you know, there's this thing, right? This this con constant dichotomy of like, oh, as people of color, uh, as trans people, as indigenous peoples, we need to, um, you know, kind of like run from the narrative and, and practice joy or be hyper joyful and, and kind of let go of what it is that makes us. And so I think um, the pieces that you presented today were really amazing in the way that we can hold two truths, 
right? And they're important truths. Like we got our peoples kind of making us who we are, um, building us up. Um, that part in that joy poem where you were talking about, like I had everything growing up, but we was poor. Like, you know, like I really resonated with that. And it really puts things into perspective that the reality is millions of people are getting murdered, Black people, Black trans women, Black men, Black children, Brown children. And, and you know, like that's just not okay. And I think this, this move towards abolitionism is an essential, <laughs> and I'm plugging my own politics too. Like that's the only way we're going to move forward. That's the only way we're going to create the new world we want to see. So I'm going to take this moment by like using the energy that you brought in um, and, and just really like reminding all of us in this moment that we are also on, on native land. We are on land that belong to other peoples. And so I ask anyone who is on the Zoom call to, to in the chat, put the name of the land that you're on. I am on Tongva land, um, currently known as Los Angeles. Um, it's important to know what land you're on. If you don't know, look it up on your own time. Um, it's also important to just like bring our peoples and our ancestors who are our people, right? And how are we holding our people accountable? How are we using our own privileges as means to like recognize where we are and how we're maneuvering in the world? So. So yeah, I want to just, let's do like two breaths together just to like honor the ancestors that are here, the ancestors that are taking care of the land. So inhale and exhale. One more time. Thank y'all for taking that moment, that beat to reground ourselves in the land that we're on and the reality of our experience um, and our own respective experiences because not one is the same. Um, I wanna introduce the next person. Um, so Jade Phoenix Martinez. Jade Phoenix Martinez, pronouns she, her, is a queer, trans femme, first-gen Filipinx parent, LA-based performance artist and poet, speaker, activist, and educator. Jade is a fierce story and truth teller, a vulnerable yet dynamic performing, po performing poet and actress, an informative and award-winning cultural producer of film and media, an activist and mother that uses her platform and art to craft nuanced dialogue and authentic expressions of women, femme, and gender non-conforming people of color in the arts, academia, and film. Jade's poetry has been featured with the Lambda Literary Press and has been, has been a featured poet at the Asian American Writers Workshop in New York City. She has also been the keynote speaker for multiple conferences across the country at schools such as UC Berkeley and Harvard. Jade is also a budding and accomplished film producer and actress with multiple films winning awards at the Outfest Film Festival in LA. Okay, Jade, let me find out. Uh, without further ado, take it away. Thanks, Faye. Thanks, Bella, for bringing that down, that fire down for us as well. Um, and thanks, Outfest, for having me and bringing me back. Um, I, it's, Outfest is one of my favorite, favorite things. Maybe you've seen me in some of the films that I've been in in the past two years. Um, I featured my documentary, How to Make a Rainbow, won my first film festival award with Outfest. So I'm hella, hella excited to be a part of this and thankful for Outfest and for y'all continuously supporting my work and supporting the narratives of trans folks, brown, black and brown folks. And so appreciate y'all um, for having me back here. Um, thanks for being here. And I'm just gonna be able to, you know, I, a woman of many talents, so you can see my films and now you can hear some of my poetry. Um, and I just wanna share a little bit of, you know, the work that I've been doing lately, um, kind of, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff been going on around us. And it seems like our world is pretty hectic when it comes to um, people of color under the hand of white supremacy. And so while poets do speak truth to power, I wanna do some of that. And I also wanna bring a little bit of 
um, kind of like we said, the, the themes of joy. And I think that it's all about a balance, right? Like we have rage, we have joy, and it's not, we're not all one or the other, and we can have moments of both. And so wanting to bring a little bit of that. Um, so this first piece is in dedication to us. And one of the things that I think about that is so toxic in white supremacy is the way that it gaslights us into um, kind of just thinking that we are, you know, nothing's wrong or we're not, you know, doing the things that, you know, that what we're speaking out against isn't happening. And so this is in um, dedication to us. They will tell you that you are broken with words laced in remorse and guilt as if being broken were somehow a fate so undesirable. I would not blame you if you believe them. I have believed them too. But what can we say of those that no longer hold up under the oppression of patriarchy, those that are fragile enough to break while being forced into industrial machines of labor designed to conform all matter in the product meant for mass consumption, those that instead shatter into pieces or bend in unintended places, when categorized into neat boxes and check marks, those of us whose parts no longer fit the outdated design, what can we say of those discarded off the production line, then gathered and shipped to be recycled with all the others deemed broken or defective. The unfinished products never able to comply with those whose parts have deemed us unfit for mass consumption. What are we to say of a world where machines, doctors, psychiatrists, parents, teachers are constantly trying to repair us, trying to make us fit into a standard of production, then put us back on the shelves, but maybe, Maybe the point isn't always to avoid being broken. Maybe there should be no shame in being discarded by a system that never had our best interests in mind to begin with. Maybe we are better off making something altogether new. And maybe, just maybe, it is the machine spitting us out that is broken and not us. All right, um, I wanna do this piece about kind of, this is the most recent piece that I wrote. And um, I'm really, it's been a couple years since like something has kind of come out of me and I'm grateful that I've, you know, something has finally come out through the pandemic and just kind of like finally, you know, getting some time to sit down and be in like my own space a lot more, um, really slow down. And so new work is starting to come out. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm also pairing with, uh, one of my best friends, Leia Ann uh, Lefembert, who's a musician and an amazing producer. And so what I have is a piece accompanied with music that's gonna be a part of a larger EP soon. So um, I'm gonna share my screen and play my music for y'all. Um, and then share this new piece. <laughs> for what feels like multiple lifetimes. Separated by social distances while our faces remain hidden beneath masks and screens. Been too long since I've hugged a friend or exchanged that knowing smile with a stranger. All while the rooms in my home become a cocoon of mixed parts broken, other parts healing, not ever really sure what day it is. So when I say that I miss you, feel like a platitude or hyperbole, it feels honest. Like the way summers in elementary school would get a little too long. When I started to miss my friends, I really miss my friends. I miss being alone amongst large crowds. I miss burying my soul in a room full of the most familiar strangers. It has never felt more like breath to me now. Now that I've forgotten what it means to be witnessed and the weightlessness of these words lift out of my chest, it's like breathing in Precious spring air after the rain washes it clean. You see, there's only so much I can know of myself. There's so much more of myself I want to discover in the reflections of those that I love, of those I have yet to meet, those of whom I will never share more than just the passing glance. We 
are a momentary fusion of lights when our hearts collide. I know we can find our way back to each other again soon. I know we can create anew the constellations we have forged for us to shine brightest. I hope for the clouds of our grief to be washed clean. As we call the sunshine of our smiles to dry out the rain, I have hope for better days. Your smiles, your friendly embrace. Though I have no clue when life will return to normal. There's even a normal to return to anymore. I do know this for sure. I'm almost ready to bloom out of this cocoon. I'm pretty damn sure that you are too. Until then, I'm being honest. Probably still miss you. All right. Um, yes. Oh, were you not able to hear that? I'm sorry. Um, okay. Music was pretty though, right? Oh, some of y'all heard? Okay, dope, dope. Um, yeah, so I guess that's just kind of, you know, how the reality is now in, you know, where we're at you know, hopefully coming back to each other soon, um, safely. I loved Outfest. I miss like being in places where we could all be in space together. Um, and I know that that's somewhere around the corner, um, but I think we also learned a lot of lessons in having really great virtual um, uh, platforms is that this is actually accessible to folks. And so I think one of the main things as we move forward is um, getting kind of like a hybrid of like, we can still keep like the capabilities of making virtual things available for folks as an accessibility option. And also doing that in the real spaces in the you know physical spaces that we're holding. And so I'm really excited to, as we move forward into like what this new future looks like, finding ways to stay connected and also staying, making things accessible for folks. So um, yeah, uh, let me keep on going with this poetry. Um, this next piece is called The Garden, and um, oftentimes people ask, um, you know, like, when did you know you were trans, or how did you know you were trans, and I think that's one of the biggest things is, like, I just don't really know how to answer that, and instead I write a poem, so this is it. Y'all still good? Um, it's hard to get, like, a sense of, like, where people are, so if you are feeling anything, um, throw something in the chat, throw some ones, throw some exclamation points. Again, another limit of like this like screen, what I've been talking about is also like trying to stay connected with the folks that are out there. So um, a big part of my energy is like feeling the folks out there that are a part of the art and engaging with me. And so anything that y'all, you know, you're feeling line, you're feeling something. I think that it goes for all the poets, all the poets, all the performers. So again, thanks for being here, sharing the story and sharing this time with me. So this is called The Garden. Growing up, it never really occurred to me that I wasn't supposed to be a boy or that I was born in the wrong body or that I wasn't supposed to be who I was. In fact, most of my adolescence, I fondly remember enjoying the mischief of my boyhood. So when asked the origin of my trans identity, I have no clear answers in response no eureka moment to speak of, no genesis to my transition. When pressed for an answer, the best I can do is cite how poorly I grew into my masculinity, how the seams of my boyhood quickly began to unravel in my process of becoming a man. Eventually, I started to outgrow its limits, started feeling trapped in its lack of vulnerability and isolated in its fear of deep emotions or connection. Slowly, I began to notice how masculinity no longer fit my body right, the way it was so fragile but needed to be worn as if it were unbreakable. So I began looking for something else to wear altogether, searching for something maybe less fragile or not so afraid to be broken. It didn't happen suddenly. I didn't wake up one morning to find the skin of my masculinity shed away overnight. Rather, I think of my transition as something more fluid. I like to think of my femme expression as little seeds planted at my birth near the roots of my fullest potential, my most authentic expression in bloom, free from the thorns and weeds of toxic masculinity assigned to me at birth and then scattered throughout the rest of my garden. 
I like to think of these femme seeds rising to the surface my whole life, how the shedding skin of my masculinity became the compost meant to prepare the soil for the spring. I like to think of myself flowering, a beautiful collection of petals peeling its way open ever so slowly, each reveal more beautiful than the last. I've come to discover myself as a resplendent garden, finally seeing its beauty nearing full bloom and how foolish of me it would be not to spend the rest of my life tending to its care. All right, thank you. Um, so I have a few more, one, one more piece to share with y'all. Um, again, my name is Jade Phoenix Martinez. I am a poet, filmmaker. If you wanna see any of my work, you can visit my website. Uh, I'll put it in the, in the chat, but also it's mxjadephoenix.com. Um, I have How to Make a Rainbow. My film is on there if you wanted to watch it. Um, and also I do screen the film and I bring my daughter with me. And so if you are someone that wants to screen the film or wants to bring me out to speak or share more of my poetry, hit me up in the chat or um, find me on my, on my website or any of my uh, social media, which is under my name, Jade Phoenix Martinez. I'm on all of those. Um, and I would love to work with any of y'all in the future. And I think one of the things that, you know, I every time I do something like this and everyone talks about how can we support um, trans folks, Asian folks in this time, um, I'm always thinking about give us opportunities to share our stories. And folks that have more privilege, how are you leveraging your privilege to give those op you know, opportunities to those on the margins, such as, you know, trans folks, black and brown, Asian folks. So. Um, if y'all are interested in doing that work and continuing to support those that are on the margins and putting our stories, just like what this Outfest is trying to do, um, and you want to continue to be a part of that, find us and give us opportunities to share our story. Um, so thank you, Outfest, for having me for this. Um, and I want to share my last piece, which is on self-love. And I think that, you know, when, when I think about joy, I think about loving myself. Um, when I think about joy, I think about how can I treat myself out? How can I, you know, pamper myself, spoil myself? And I think that loving ourselves is really important. And that's such a big part of how we cultivate joy is that first of all, we have to believe that we deserve it and that we are worthy of it. And so what I wanna leave we all with is a little bit uh, a poem about cultivating self-love. And again, thank you all for having me. I'm not saying that loving yourself erases all your problems but I believe it helps mitigate against the unnecessary ones. The problems that can be avoided, the problems that can arise from the insecurity of not knowing what self-love can look like. In a world we are taught to prioritize others above ourselves, it is the problems that can sink a ship from the inside, like water breaking into the deck, like how even in a crashing plane in case of an emergency, we are told to make sure to put on our own masks first before helping those around us. What good are we for those whom we love if we are not breathing, if we are not solid enough to avoid slipping through the cracks, if we cannot prevent our own waters from sinking us down to the bottom of the ocean? I'm not saying that loving yourself will fix all of your problems, but I think at the very least, it can be a fountain or waterfall from which your love for others can spring or a well from which others can draw from. There are so many ways to love this much I admit, but to give of yourself from which you have not leaves a dry well unable to quench thirst or bodies being swept by a tide unable to find footing on the shore. I, on the other hand, prefer to swim and breathe in my own calm waters before venturing into another's ocean and to leave the sinking to the broken down ships. Thanks y'all, I appreciate y'all for having me. Um, enjoy the rest of the night. I know some of these other poets, they're dope. You're gonna enjoy them, so thank you. Yes, Jade, oh, that was amazing. Thank you so much for, for those words and that magic, that music. Um, I'm super happy to be here again, just again, reminding everyone who's here, thank you so much for joining us and reveling in this magic and this power and this revolution, right, which is us telling our stories, us showing up for us, 
and making space for our people. Um, so yeah, get comfortable. We got two more performers, get some water, get comfortable. You don't have to sit up, right? You can lay down if you need to. Um, I was really inspired by um, a lot of the poems that Jade just presented and that Bella opened up with. Um, so I'm gonna just do one quick little piece. This is like a, an ofrenda um, to all of the magic, all of the joy that we are, all the resilience, and it's really tiny. It's titled Creation Myth People. Instead of being known as the nothing people or the we are invisible, leave us alone people, we have become the papaya people, the brimming with black seeds people, the spilled Milky Way people, the big haired people people that make creation myths for every solar return. We are the tire rubble sandal people, the runner people. But this time, instead of running into the hills for shelter, we run across the blurred state lines as a one people, as a free people. We are still the children of the sun and moon people, but here we know ourselves as the Wayne and Crescent people who lift river tides with our hands. We are the cosecha people, the guitar people, the forest people, the cackle and snap who snap the necks of peanut shells and chickens alike. We are the sing until it hurts people. We are the giant great eyed people, the short mystic people. Here we are no longer the alien people who leave sigils behind in desert stones. We are the word people, the desert people, the mountain people, the plains people, the world people, the platanos macho people, the copper people, the green lightning people. We were once the no one's people. We are now the not one people. The land stretches bountifully, so we are no longer the lift yourself up by the bootstrap people. We are no longer the bag people carrying their whole ass life across their shoulders. We are the bone people the suck the marrow out of everything people the live no matter what people we are the prism people not the prison people we are the skin people we are the hands people we are the always holding always holding always holding we are the always holding people the <laughs> the laughing people the bite into fresh sandia people the smile people the always playing people we always playing people the eternal people the eternal people Thank you all so much for holding that. I felt it was um, calling me to just share it in the space. Um, so without further ado, let's continue to our next performer. Thank you all for letting me have my little moment. <laughs> the next person is Tyrus Winter. Tyrus Winter, an aspiring legend and self-proclaimed 70s guru. With a passion for the arts, his love lies in multiple outlets from painting, dancing, fashion to poetry. Tyrus's poetic presence has, be, has been depicted in the Los Angeles Times, Deadline, Tell.TV, Youth to the People, and even the Joshua Tree local newspaper, okay? Tyrus has performed all across the US from Sundance Film Festival to the stages at Brave New Voices. He is a winner of multiple slam titles and his work displays all aspects of himself and his writing as well as performances. Winter's writing embodies self-reflection, family, culture, sexuality, mental health, the economy, and more. Cats Tyrus starring in the film Summertime, directed by Carlos Lopez Estrada or on Instagram at Winter, Winter Issues, posting about his children slash pets slash stuffed animals named Giraffica and Piggy Smalls. <laughs> Without further ado, let's clap it up, make some noise for all the performers, but especially Tyrus. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Tyrus Winter. Can y'all hear me? I want to make sure. <laughs> um, so first I want to say how honored and how grateful I am to not only be a part of this um, showcase, but to be a part of a community that is just so loving and is just so open and so able to live authentically as we are, which is just really telling because we're amazing. Um, so the first poem that I want to do for you guys is titled, Whatever. I'm going to start it for you. There is an art to an attitude. The details in an eye roll of a quick side look, the blotches of a head roll, the beauty in the mm -hmm, the scoffs or silence is enough to inflict emotion as any great art should. This 
is one of the few things I credit my mother for, for teaching me how to paint a picture with the slow rise of my eyes or blatant stare, how to use my hands for punctuation, to sign my name on every masterpiece, the art of speaking with sealed lips, the eyelash flutter of what? Of repeat that. My mother was born into the art. I still feel as though I'm doing it wrong. Instead of a flutter, I blink twice, which in my head I mean whatever, but translates is help, which makes sense, but I will always cut a conversation short before I get too vulnerable, like whatever when my counselor asks if I'm okay, whatever to eating, but I'm always double blinking, so I guess whatever to life or help or whatever to any help offered, whatever I'm fine. If I blink enough, I might convince myself that whatever is a state of mind, that I do not need help, that I can catch the world in my lashes, so that whatever gets in across my corneas until it blurs into my tear ducts and let the problem become dormant enough for me to double blink. Thank you, that was my first poem. I also don't know why I go into a British accent <laughs> randomly. <laughs> so if anybody knows any cures or anything I can do to stop that, let me know, send me something. <laughs> um, but um, my next and final, oh my God, thank you so much. I can, all right. <laughs> More British, the British are coming. Can you imagine? I honestly just want to go to England one day and just like prance around in my roller skates and just, you know, fuck shit up. I don't know if I was allowed to. Um, but the next and final poem that I'm going to do is titled Make Me Your Black Queer Teen Idol. <sighs> Play my songs in every radio station. Let my voice loop in your ears and the new headphones you purchased to hear the bass properly on my latest hit. Listen on your way to appointments while sitting in traffic, while ignoring your partner. Remember my lyrics in the shower. I want so badly to see me in concert without my cover on Vogue at the liquor store. Don't purchase the magazine, place it above your headboard. Draw me portraits, send me letters, friend request my private Facebook. Let me be your lock screen. Let me be the first black queen queer team to win a music award in every genre, perform at the Super Bowl, face plastered on backpacks and cereal boxes, have my own perfume and shoe line. Let me be loved by your no longer homophobic father. Allow my mother to call and say sorry for not accepting me earlier. Have white cis gay men apologize for ever discriminating. Watch me switch hate to love with the first track on my album. Love me in North America, love me in South America and Europe Africa, Asia, Australia, everywhere I wasn't welcome. Love me while I'm alive, when I'm not a headline. Love me as if I'm your friend, like I'm your family. Love me like I'm your everything, but just so happen to be black and queer. Love that I'm proud to be a black queer. Make me your dark skin, Afro wearing, tongue popping, high heel strutting, black, queer, teen, idol. Thank you so much. So I guess I should like plug myself because apparently I don't do that enough. So if you want to check, I guess, my workout, my fashion out because I make my own clothes, you can go and find me at Winter Issues on Instagram, on any platform. I'm not as active on Twitter, but you know, we're going to get there one day. Um, so yeah, and also catch me at this festival, the Outpress Festival, in starting in summertime. And I just want to say thank you guys so much. Thank you all so much. And I'm so grateful. So honored. Thank you. Have a blessed and prosperous day. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrus, that was dope. Uh, I'm still gagging. Uh, g -g 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 <laughs> I'm annoying. Um, that was great. I'm so hyped that I just experienced that. That was great. Um, thank you for that. Uh, everyone follow Tyrus, Bella, Jade. Um, keep up with their work. See what's up. Um, I'm gonna present the lovely last performer of the evening, Yosimar Reyes. Yosimar Reyes is a nationally acclaimed poet and public, public speaker and badass bitch. Born in Guerrero, Mexico and raised in Eastside San Jose, Reyes explores the themes of migration and sexuality in his work. The advocate named Reyes, one of 13 LGBT Latinos changing the world and Remezcla included Reyes on their list of 10 up and coming Latinx poets you need to know.
without further ado, take it away, B. Thank you, friend. Um, buenas noches, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. My name is Josima Reyes. Uh, I'm a poet, uh, a writer, and I have three poems for you tonight. Um, the first poem, Saro Lo Que Soy, it's a short piece. It's that in Spanglish. So if you don't speak Spanish, look for the context clues and you're going to get it. Um, it goes like this. This is my nature. The truth in my heart, the breath in my lungs. Yo soy the one you fear, the one that got away. So lo único que se te fue. Yo soy el hijo que nunca será padre, el nieto que nunca será husband. I am the near and the far of earth and sky, el sol y la luna. Soy everything that is in between, entre el hombre y la mujer. Soy el ser que por tu ignorancia no quiere reconocer. I am the one you define with hate. The one that doesn't fit your labels and manages to reclaim his name. Yo soy dualidad. Y aunque digas que esa es la misma canción, el mismo poema, te repito que nosotros seguimos hablando de compasión. Yo soy de fuego y tierra, de mares que liberan de muertes silenciosas. Yo soy la muerte que me deseas. I'm of destruction and reparations, of freedom in cages. I'm the bird that still sings praises. Y con todas mis fuerzas te digo que tu odio me libera, porque más que joto enjaulado, yo soy el poder de la conciencia. Um, buenas noches, everybody. I'm so excited to be here um, to share a couple of the poems that I'm writing. Um, um, so I'm a little queer and stuff. Um, and I also hope so happen to be undocumented. I have a DACA, I am a DACA beneficiary, DACA deferred action for childhood arrivals, an executive order signed by Obama in 2012 that grants me the legal authorization for to work for two years. Every two years, I pay the government $495 and they give me uh this work permit, right? And so um it's interesting because you um I was just posting about this, right? That oftentimes when I tell people that I'm undocumented, people tell me like, oh my God, you should just get married to fix your status. But people are not really pulling through with tangible action items. Like I think people need to give me candidates, girl, because it's really hard out in these streets, okay? So <laughs> now I'm like for people, I'm like, you need to give me actual candidates because when you telling me that advice is really not helping me. Um, so with that in mind, I wrote this piece um, titled, Why Don't You Just Get Married? Um, it's a little cheesy, but I think it's cute. So we'll see, it goes like this. Why don't you just get married? I don't want to have to marry a citizen. I want the day I fall in love to be without me thinking of nations and allegiance. I want it to be how the white girls in the movies do it, carelessly running through New York, to New York City, fucking everybody until one day I fall. I want the day I fall in love to be without me thinking if he has a social, if he can keep me here. I don't want the pressure of thinking that after 30 years of living here, he is a blessing and opening a crack in the system for me to get in. I don't want to think of green cards or visas, of finally having a foundation to step on. I want my loving to be an option, not a way out of this prison. I want the day I set foot on an altar to gaze into my eye, to his eyes, be the day I know that papers don't matter um so that's the the thing and i understand that marriage is a social construct honey but it comes with benefits okay i'm just gonna say that okay the girls are out here abolishing marriage but it's cute when you do your taxes um but <laughs> Uh, this next, this last piece that I want to do, um, it's one of my favorite poems and I, I hopefully I get to film it into something, um, uh, a video, I'll give it visuals, but it's titled Acts of Resistance. Uh, and Acts of Resistance was born out of this idea of like, what is the most act of defiance I can commit against a white supremacist heteropatriarchal structure? And I realized that it was to make love with someone that knows my struggle or someone that I don't have to explain where I come from because they just get it. And that is like the intimacy. You know, there's a difference between fucking intimacy, right? And so for me, I think that's the moment that I want. And so I bought this envision of what it would be like um, to have love be a, a way of healing. Um, so this is Act of Resistance and um, I'll dedicate it to all of you. So hopefully, you have somebody in your life you can be committing acts of resistance with. It goes like this. This is not fucking, not to be confused with love making. This is resistance. Your hand press upon my chest, the way your lips feel on mine. This can never be anything but that. 
And to think that people have died for us to feel so complete, you on top of me saying this feels right and it does. Never for a moment that I would think I would find myself in this predicament, whispering your name as if I was in deep prayer. So in the blessings I envision, I see your hands caressing the parts of my body I have grown to be ashamed of. You make me feel me in its totality because every time we're interconnected like this, I feel stronger like somehow through this fucking love, make it, call it whatever, I am home. So I open the doors of my body to you. No longer afraid over the ghosts that haunt me. The ones that came inside and left me empty. Took the innocence I saw for acceptance. You bring warmth after the heated bodies. I'm surprised you're still here holding my hand. Telling me I should not feel dirty because rituals like this do not involve bloodshed. This is not fucking. This is resistance because brown boys are not supposed to love like this. We're not supposed to fuck like this. We're supposed to take, break into women's bodies and leave them homeless. We're supposed to inflict our power on the bodies of those that have nothing but love to give this is not fucking this is resistance you and i laying in the middle of the night side by side your arm as my pillow your stories is all i want to hear this is not fucking this is resistance so now that we're getting ready to do this again i want you to hold me but this time pretend that we're committing this act of resistance we are gaining everything that was taken away from us our dignity our pride our love for one another do me with justice my mother always told me that going against authority will kill me. And if it does, there's no other way that I want to die. But with you by my side, both of us shouting, fuck the police, this is frontline resistance. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you so much for having me here. It's so truly an honor to share the stage with uh, all these dynamic poets. Um, you can find more of my work at yosimar.com. Um, and yeah, um, thank you so much. God bless America and all those beautiful patriarchal things. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Wow. Um, can I have all of the performers just put up their camera one last time so everyone can look at your beautiful selves and everybody make some noise wherever you are because I'm making noise right here by myself looking stupid like my dog's looking at me wild but yo y'all fuck this shit up. Thank you for blessing everybody here uh, for revolutionizing our days. <laughs> for bringing some light into our moment, into our days, into our grieving. And here we are together. And I'm very, very grateful that I was able to host. I didn't do much, but just read y'all's files and like hype some shit up. But like, you know, I'm grateful to be here and um, all of that. Thank you everybody who joined us, who, who bore witness to the magic of this evening. Uh, make sure you watch all the videos. Make sure you follow all these poets' work. Make sure you give them money It just, I mean, get their Venmo handles and just send them money because you can. Um, so yeah, that's it for us. Um, I'm so grateful to be here. Outfest programming. I don't know if y'all want to jump in and say something real quick. I, I just want to say thank you again. I just want to give a special round of applause for our amazing Master of Ceremonies Bay. Thank you so much for blessing this evening. Um, thank you. It, I. I couldn't have done a good job. So I'm so thankful that you were here to lead this conversation, like to lead this performance in this evening. Thank you again to all these performers. I love the, the balance between um, the truth of this moment and also like not being, our stories not just being the trauma, but us never being able to escape that trauma. So I'm like very thankful for all of your voices and all of your stories. And the only way that we can really truly change the narrative is to continue telling our stories. So, so, so I'm so thankful for all of you who are going out there and tell stories um, because they will not tell it for us. They, they will pretend they cannot hear us. So we will, we will shout it, we will, we will sing it, we will create work that tells our own stories. Um, and I'm just so thankful for all of you. Um, and like everyone, please follow these amazing performers, see the films, as Faye said, see the films, follow them, send money, please always send money. Um, money's, money's lovely. We live in a capitalist society, um, unfortunately. Um, so thank you all and thank you for joining us. And hopefully this is the start to set a tone for you for the rest of Outfest. Um, so on Outfest Fusion, so please check out the content. We have workshops, we have panels, we have conversations. So. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Bye.